There's a lot of ways to organize your lights when it comes to house plants. And in this video, uh, we're gonna be talking about the right way to set up a light for an edible indoor house plant like the ones that we sell here at Urban Leaf. Okay, so the first concept that we need to understand is that the artificial lights that we use to replicate sunshine behave very, very differently uh, than the sun itself. As you know, the sun is like millions and millions of miles away. And so the impact of moving a plant like a few inches when you're talking about something that's 93 million miles away is basically insignificant. Uh, by contrast, the impact of moving a plant a few inches away from a grow light can be phenomenal. And it can be the difference between a plant that flourishes and one that dies. So artificial lights like this one are basically what's known as a point source of light. And with point sources of light, they follow an interesting relationship as you move away. Basically, every time you double the distance that you move away, the intensity of the light that we're, we've got landing on our leaves, or in this case, our palm meter, uh, reduced by a factor of quarter, or 0.25. Okay, so what I've done here is basically place the light globe directly on top of the par meter. And you'll see I'm getting a reading of about four and a half thousand here. And what I'm gonna do is gradually move this light up and away. So we're now at a distance of, mm, I'd say maybe two inches or so. And you'll notice that we've got a reading here of about 1800 or so. Um, I'm going to keep moving away and we'll get up to about, that's close to four inches and it hasn't quite gone down by a quarter but you know, let's be honest, my measuring here is not precise but you get the idea. Basically the light intensity is dropping off very, very dramatically as I lift this light up. Um, even this far away. Um, which is only about eight inches or so away from the par meter, I've gone down to about 200 or so. So we're now at about 5% uh, the intensity of where we started at. Um, so for reference, these plants are gonna wanna see a par value uh, between about 500 to 1000 or so. That's gonna be a pretty good range. Um, I realize though that not all of you guys are gonna have a palm meter at home. You can get one online if you want to, but there are actually other ways that you can measure this uh, yourself. And I'm gonna show, how you, show you guys how to do that now. So if you wanna try this at home, I recommend you download one of the free light metering apps. I've actually got one here called Light Meter. And the way it works is you just put it under a source of light. It can use either the front or rear camera on your phone and you just press the button here. And so I've got a reading here, as you can see, of 434. When I move it down uh, back to bench level, it's more like 295, 284. So basically you can see that the light intensity about halved when I went from here uh, down to here. Now, it's important to remember that what these apps are measuring is a unit of lux, which is a more general um, measurement of light intensity. It's about sort of the light intensity that us as humans read or see. Um, and it's a, a unit that would be commonly used by photographers. Uh, in the plant world, we usually measure light with a par value, which is micromoles per meter squared per second. And this is the amount of light that is sort of specific and useful to plants. So the measurements that you're getting out of these two are not the same thing. And just because you get a high measurement here doesn't tell you that it's the right type of light for plants. What it does tell you is it gives you a bit of a sense of uh, general light intensity. And what you can do is then get a reference point from sunshine and then understand how bright your, your indoor light is compared to the sunshine outside. So let me show you what I mean. So it's a pretty overcast day here in New York City. It's uh, the end of November here. It's really cloudy outside. I cannot see the sun at all. Um, and truthfully, I'm not sure that this, even this amount of light uh, would be good enough for growing edible plants. But I just wanna show you the relationship between the light that I'm getting through here and the grow light that I have over on the bench there. 
So I'm putting the phone with the app up next to the window here and I'm going to capture a reading. Um, so we're getting things in the kind of 800, 900 type range with the app. Um, now let's go back and compare that to what we get with the grow light. So to get the same 8 to 900 type value with the grow light, I need to be about here. So that's basically three or four inches away from uh, the globe itself. Now remember, what we are doing here, because we're measuring in lux, uh, we're measuring the light intensity for human eyes, not plants. And so to do this comparison properly, you would actually need to use a palm meter. Uh, but that is a specialty bit of equipment. Those things are not cheap. If you want to get one, then by all means do. But if you want to just bootstrap it and have a go, um, then maybe start with an app like this. Anyway, back to the palm meter and plants. We've actually gone and tested five of the top selling grow lights on Amazon and looked at how their intensity drops off with distance. And we've summarized those results for you in this graph. Not only can you see how quickly the light intensity falls with distance, but you can also see just how different their intensity is on an absolute basis. There's really a massive difference uh, between the good and the bad globes here. Now for fast growing, light loving, edible plants, we recommend a par value of at least 400, but you can afford to go as high as 1500. And what this graph is showing you is that globes that do have optics uh, and therefore are throwing a fairly concentrated beam of light, you want to have your globe for those so sorry, you want to have your plant for those sorts of globes about four to six inches away, about like that. Now some manufacturers may recommend that you go as far as 12 to 18 inches, so about there. And that's probably okay if you have like a low light indoor house plant like this guy. Um, but for the edible plants, um, like the stuff that we sell here at Urban Leaf, uh, you're definitely going to need to have it a lot, lot closer in order to keep that plant happy. Now, if you're using a non-directional light globe, such as this CFL or compact fluorescent, uh, basically what non-directional light globes do is they throw light out in all different directions. A couple of recommendations I would make there. First of all, get a lampshade, uh, something like this. I know this is not the prettiest thing in the world, um, but it's really, really important to the effectiveness of a light. Uh, we do have a separate video all about that. But anyway, what I would do is, if you're gonna use a CFL, uh, you wanna get this literally as close as you can, um, almost kissing the leaves of the plant. Um, that does mean that you're going to need to come back and check it every couple of days for placement. Uh, what you want to avoid is obviously the leaves going into the light and getting burnt and having a little basil fire. Um, that would not be very cool. Um, so yeah, make sure you keep an eye on it if you're going to do this, but really to get any use out of this sort of globe uh, for an edible plant, you, you literally need to have it um, almost touching the leaves. All right guys, that's uh, it for our uh, lighting video today. I hope you found this useful. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, in the description to this video, I've got links to all of the products that we've talked about here today. Uh, and if you'd like to learn more about indoor gardening and growing your own food, please make sure that you like this video, uh, subscribe to the channel, we've got more coming soon, and I will look forward to seeing you then. Take care, bye.